Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. First of all, if you're new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day. So if you're looking for some reading inspiration, you're looking for some things that you want to read during the summer, you just like following book reviews, then feel free to stick around. Now let's talk about the book that I am going to be reviewing today. So actually lately I've been on a roll with reading really, really good books. My style of selecting a book to read just involves more or less me going into the library, wandering around until I find something interesting and pulling it off my shelf and putting it in my little book bag, checking it out and reading it. So I do have a lot of things that I read that I enjoy, but sometimes I do have some misses that I don't enjoy. But lately I feel like I've been on a roll where I've read some really good stuff back to back to back. So luck is on my side. And this continues in the book that I'm going to be reviewing today. The one I'm going to be reviewing today is called In This Corner of the World by Fumio Kouno. I will have the name in the description in case I'm saying that wrong. And the um, artist and author, they did both the story and the art. So the this collection pulled my attention off the shelf due to the colors and it just seemed to be one contained single story. This indeed contains three volumes, so I think this series might be available to purchase in more than one volume based on the table of contents because it has volume one, volume two, volume three, but I have the whole, or I checked out the whole collection, the whole edition all in one. I read the back of this and it talked about a young woman in Japan in the 1940s talking about how she got married and moved to a new area. It is a fiction work, but it does discuss real events. So I decided to take it out and give it a read. So already right away, just from reading the back of the book, we kind of know that this probably isn't going to be a happy book, at least overall. It might not be a happy book or it might include some things that are a little bit more unhappy. If we think about 1940s, we think about Japan, we're thinking about World War II, and we're thinking about Hiroshima Prefecture, which is where the young woman who is the um, main character in this book, whose name is Suzu, is living. We think about what happened in that area in 1945. We start to see that maybe this isn't going to go perfectly. And sure enough, this book follows Suzu as she moves from a small village that she has her family, her siblings, into a marriage. So right away we kind of see that things are kind of interesting. Obviously this is a different time so marriages were done differently back in the day, but this was a marriage between Suzu and this man that basically chose her to be the her his bride. Um, she did get a yes or no choice and she just thought well I'll marry this man and she moves into his family. So she is living with his older sister and mother and all these people. Basically she's been uprooted from this home that she's known and moving to a new place which is already a little I don't want to say traumatic but it's a difficult change for anyone moving from one place to another it is a change of sorts and it's something you do have to get used to so she's going through this but at the same time she has this big upheaval in her personal life there's also this general upheaval that's going on throughout the country so World War II Japan is being drawn into this global conflict and when we think about war I think something to remember is it may be started by governments or people sitting in cabinets by people calling the decisions by generals, but oftentimes the people who really suffer the most are the civilians, are the people who didn't really get a say in how this went and who are just trying to live their life. So Suzu is just a young woman who got married to a man and she's trying to acclimate to her new home and there tends to be, or there starts to become little problems. The older sister clearly has a problem with her. The older sister has a child who she does not want hanging out with Suzu. Suzu uncovers the fact that her husband actually was in love with a woman who worked in the pleasure district in the area. And obviously they couldn't be together due to, I'm assuming the nature of her profession. Um, well, Suzu herself has unresolved feelings for an old classmate and both of them have kind of put this aside for the good of their marriage. Suzu's unable to get pregnant. There's this looming conflict of war and everything is falling apart or not falling apart, but life is very difficult for Suzu, both in her personal life and also in the world at large. I feel like this book starts to sneak up on you because it kind of is this attrition effect. It's not like there's one horrifying event that occurs, although there's some very traumatic moments that occur in this series. And I'm saying series because it is three volumes, even though I read just one book for this. Um, there are traumatic moments that happen. There are big things that happen. There are big moments of loss. There's obviously a very large moment when Hiroshima is bombed by the Americans. But it's kind of this war of attrition against Suzu where like it's the little things that add up day after day. The rations, the shortage, the bombing, the air raid shelters, the um, they call it house pruning, um, the 
the continued tension between her and her husband, the loss of people they love, having to witness dead bodies in the street. Um, just this constant little adding up day over day of the horrors of war. And I feel like this book, it never gets incredibly graphic about some of the very horrifying things that can happen. You're not going to see anything that m might be really, really horrifying to see or that I would consider inappropriate. I was thinking when I read this that this would be something that would be very good to include maybe in a curriculum when students start to learn about World War II. I feel like this would be something that would have been very good for me to read. I'm not sure, I'm not an educator, so I don't know what age I would maybe introduce this at, but kind of introducing about Introducing the perspective in a world history class about what a civilian has to go through in a way that isn't um, maybe incredibly graphic or maybe a little bit more appropriate for a uh, someone who's a little younger to see is kind of what this book details. It does a really good job of showing how difficult life can be in a situation like this without getting too graphic or too... Um, into details that may be really disturbing for some readers. And I think it does this balance really, really well, though, where you feel like the author isn't cheating those experiences or isn't minimizing the horror of those experiences. As a reader, I feel like you get really emotionally drawn into Suzu's story. You really want her to be happy, and she herself is having to learn how to find little moments of happiness and peace in the horrors that are going on around her. It's almost like the only way she can stay sane. She needs to find those little moments of peace and refuge in her day-to-day -day life to make it through to the next moment. She has to learn how how she's going to handle this relationship with her husband. She needs to learn or she's trying to figure out a way to build a bridge and maintain peace with her husband's older sister who she's at odds with. She's trying to connect with this young girl who's in her household. She has her own problems to worry about and there are of course some larger traumatic events that happen that really weigh on her that she has to process and work through or at least find a way to live with to continue through life. Overall this was a five-star read. I highly 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 recommend. This was it kind of emotionally hit hard, but like I said, it, it built up to it. So it's not like it just came out of nowhere and hit you hard with with the um, gut punch, basically. It kind of built over time where you just, it, it kept wearing on you and you, you kept seeing the effect of this long-term war or this longer war that was having on these civilians, these people who are just having to try to live their daily life with their normal struggles that everyone else has to do. Everyone has to deal with all the time in their personal life, troubles in the marriage, um, infertility, uh, pro problems with the in-laws, so like the day-to-day -day problems of living life compounded and made more difficult by the fact that there's this ongoing war, that they were neither a part of making the decision to start, nor were they going to be instrumental in bringing this war to a close, but they're the ones who are having to live with the effect that this plays in their life, and it ultimately does wind up playing a huge part in everyone in this story's lives. Like I said, I feel like this is appropriate all the way down to I mean, I probably wouldn't give this to like a five-year-old, they probably wouldn't understand this, but I feel like this, while discussing very heavy topics, does it in a way that's accessible to a wide range of audiences, starting with a quite young, maybe middle school level. I feel like, like I said, it, it wraps you and brings you in emotionally, and then it comes out of nowhere with this building up of the, 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 the war of attrition, basically, against you and the emotional wear and tear that you go through reading this book. And I feel like at the end, you will fall in love with it and you will want to pick up a copy for yourself. If you have read this series, please let me know what you thought about it. Please let, you know if, please let me know if there's anything else similar to this that you think I might like. Let me know your thoughts and comments about it. I'd love to hear it. Um, if there's anything else you think I should be reading, any other books you think I should check out that I haven't been reading or reviewing or that you'd like to see me review, please also leave that in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.